It's been said that the history of rocks is like the history of war. Vast periods of boredom interspersed with short episodes of terror. Actually, in the rock, most of the time is not in the body of the rock itself, but in the gaps between them. And let's have a look at this little bit in here. We've got, it's all grey rock. This little bit is a lighter greeny grey, happens to be a bit sandier. That bit is a bit finer, a bit muddier. There's a sharp gap in here. Now, how might those have formed? Well, I'll show you. I'm going to make some rocks here in the back garden, and I want you to concentrate as I do it on how long each event takes. They're going to be a bit different from the ones we've just seen. Some wet sand. Some water. Now I'm going to shake it up. Now start watching. In just a few seconds, the sand has settled out. And I'm sure you can see a layer of sand forming at the bottom there. If we let enough time pass, the muddy bit is going to settle out as well. Now, the mud is starting to settle out, but it's going to take several days, perhaps a week, for the water to clear. Nonetheless, we're forming a layer of mud on top of the sand. Now, event number two. I'm going to add some more sand. I asked you to think about how long each of these events took. Now, the two sands, the bottom one and the top one, settled out in seconds. The very thin, muddy layer in the middle took much longer, days, to settle. But the real time is between the two pourings of the sands. I could have put the second sand in days, weeks, even years later, for all we know. And it's just the same in rocks. When we look at rocks, there is much more time in the boundary between two rock units than there ever is in the actual rocks themselves. So in layered rocks like these limestones, there's far more time represented by the boundary here than there ever is in the limestone underneath or the limestone up above. <laughs>